It is the Holiday Bash episode of Dynamite. We hear from Absolute Ricky Starks and Jamie Hayter defends her AEW Women's Championship against Hikara Shida. All this and more on Dynamite Debrief. Hey guys, how you all doing? The Wrestling Guy back here today. Welcome to another episode of Dynamite Debrief. The last episode of Dynamite Debrief before the end of 2022. So, what a, what a couple of weeks it's been of Dynamite Debrief. Thank you so much for the support you guys have shown here on the channel. It's been amazing. Let's hope that AEW can give us a lot more to talk about in 2023. But this is the Holiday Bash episode of Dynamite. So, as usual, we're going to break everything down here today in this episode. Talk about the matches, the promos, all of the other bits and pieces that have happened on this week's episode. So if you guys do go on to enjoy, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Without further ado, let's have a look at what's happened this week on Dynamite. So we would kick things off with absolute Ricky Starks coming down to the ring to cut a promo. Um, he would announce on Dark Elevation the night before that he was going to be coming down to address the fans regarding his AEW World Championship match against MJF last, last week. He would get into the ring and he would tell the fans about the fact that although he lost as a man, MJF won as a coward. Really, really good on here. Um, every time Ricky Stark seems to pick up the microphone, it seems to just work. It seems to be magic on there for him. Ricky Starks is probably one of my standouts of the year in wrestling, in my opinion. He is absolutely fantastic. I really hope 2023 is going to be the year of absolute Ricky Starks because he is amazing. Really, really big fan of him. Before we could really get into this promo, though, he was interrupted by none other than the Ocho, Chris Jericho. He would come out onto the rampway, flanked, of course, by Sammy Guevara and Daniel Garcia of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Uh, strangely enough, Chris Jericho began by complimenting Ricky Starks, um, who would then announce that he wanted um, he would then offer Ricky Starks the opportunity to join the JAS. Ricky Starks made it very, very clear he was not interested. Um, he referred to Chris Jericho's physique as that of an air fryer and also his current looks to that of a divorced dad as well. So really, really good on here. The fans absolutely hysterical for this one. They loved it. Fans really behind Ricky Starks as well, which is uh, what we like to see. Nice to see the, some of the younger stars getting pushed up as well, getting a lot more TV time. Really, really good. Uh, after some back and forth insults between Jericho and Ricky Starks, we would then see him get attacked by behind by Jake Hager, uh, followed, of course, by the other members of the JAS, coming down, doing a beat down on Ricky Starks. But who should come to the save than none other at the man who holds the privilege, in my opinion, of the upset of 2022, None other than Action Andretti, who beat Chris Jericho in his match last week at Winter is Coming. He would come down, make the save of Ricky Starks, uh, and they would both fend off the JAS, leaving them standing tall at the end. Really, really good on here. Uh, two of AEW's bright up-and-coming stars, Ricky Starks, Action Andretti. Let's hope we see a lot from these two in 2023. Um, both really, really good young talent on here that they could really do something with. Uh, we would find out as well that on the January 4th episode of Dynamite, it will be the Ocho Chris Jericho versus Absolute Ricky Starks, one-on-one -on -one in a match on the episode of Dynamite. Really, really good. Talk about kicking off the new year with a bang. This is how you do it on here. Uh, Chris Jericho, Ricky Starks, keep an eye out for that one. And obviously, the Dynamite debrief will be covering that one uh, in the new year. So really, really good on there. Cracking way to start the show. Ricky Starks, like I said, every time he's on the mic, it seems to turn to gold for him. Really, really good start on here. Great way to kick off this week's episode of Dynamite. Then we have our first match of the evening. It was the fifth match in the Best of Seven series for the AEW Trio Championships between The Elite and Death Triangle. So, just in case you guys have been living under a rock for the past couple of weeks, um, this all came about from Full Gear. Uh, they had a match for the Trio's titles, which would then result in a Best of Seven series. And we are now on match five. Um, three to Death Triangle and one to the Elite going into this matchup. So if Death Triangle do pick up the victory here, they will successfully retain their AW Trios Championships. If the Elite can pick up the victory, then we will go into match six. So match number five this week adds a little bit of spice here in the fact that it's a no disqualification match. So really good to see on there. Both teams doing an absolutely fantastic job again, as always. Uh, Nick Jackson selling the ankle injury from last week really, really well. Um, Kenny Omega taking a very vicious um, shot to the head with the ring bell hammer, which is really, really, uh, which, which was a bit kind of, oh, to see. Um, 
The Young Bucks will be able to deliver a huge Meltzer driver to Phoenix to pick up the 1-2-3 and the win, making it 3-2 and two now in this best of seven series. Really, really good stuff on here by both teams, doing an absolutely fantastic job on here. Uh, the matches that these guys have had, all five of them have been absolutely fantastic. And we would know that the sixth match is going to be a false count anywhere, so that's going to be really exciting. Really looking forward to that one to see what happens on there. Uh, everyone did what they needed to do in this match. All six guys were absolutely great on there. And like I said, the Elite pick up the victory. Great stuff on there. Then we would have another promo. This time it's from the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. So Rene Paquet would start um, in an in ring promo of Brian Danielson, talking to him about his mentor, William Regal, uh, that, of, um, uh, uh, for the former leader of the Blackpool Combat Club. And what does this, the future hold for the Blackpool Combat Club? Um, I'm a really big fan of the Blackpool Combat Club. I really hope that there's something that can come about with the with the guys in it in 2023. Really, really good group on there. Uh, it'd be a shame to see it all break down just because of William Regal uh, leaving the company. But we'll see what happens in 2023. Uh, Brian Danielson would start opening up about his relationship with William Regal. Um, get it really touching for the fans there. Before he was interrupted by none other than the firm's all ego Ethan Page. Um, Brian Danielson and Ethan Page would go back and forth with insults, um, going after one another. And Brian Danielson would then lay down the challenge for a match between all ego Ethan Page and Brian Danielson. Again, really, really looking forward to that one. Um, but Page um, declined uh, the usual heel character that you see on there. He said that he isn't ready for a match tonight and he will have it next week. So next week, it will be all ego Ethan Page and Brian Danielson. Really, really good on here. Really, really nice to see. Um, this was did what it needed to do, but I think it kind of took away from um, what the, the the kind of the nucleus of what the promo was about, which was uh, William Regal and Brian Danielson. I think that this is purely setting up for Brian Danielson and MJF sometime in the future. That would be an extraordinary match if we get that one. The American Dragon versus MJF, really, really good on here. Looking forward to see what happens on there with that one. Then we would have Hook in action. So the FTW champion Hook would come down and he would have a match against Exodus Prime, uh, the least effective Transformer. <laughs> um, uh, he would end up getting absolutely demolished. It was a squash match for Hook on there. Good to see Hook on some TV. Let's have, let him have some proper matches though. Don't just keep doing his squash matches with him. And please get rid of that FTW title. It doesn't mean anything. He's not doing anything with it. Let's get him after a belt, like maybe the TNT title or the All Atlantic belt. Let's, uh, let's, let's really push Hook in 2023. Um, after the match, we would have uh, Stokely Hathaway uh, appear for the second segment in five minutes. He would come down to the ring um, and he, along with um, Lee Moriarty and Big Bill. Big Bill would end up getting into a beatdown with Jungle Boy Jack Perry backstage. Um, this kind of was a bit kind of lame on here. Didn't really enjoy that one too much. Uh, I think they're setting up for this potential partnership between uh, Jungle Boy and Hook, which I which I'm not which I'm not too against. Um, I think there's two really good guys on there, so I think they could do a great job with that. Um, then back in the ring, we had of course uh, John Moxley and Darius Martin of to of Top Flight. They would be going up um, in a preview of Friday's three hundred thousand dollar Three Kings Christmas Casino Trios Royal. Whew, that's a mouthful to say. Um, that sounds almost like the worst word-generated experiment of all time. Well, yeah, they could have come up with a much better name than that, in my opinion, but that is what it is. Uh, Martin looked competitive in this match. He did an absolutely brilliant job on there against um, John Moxley, who a lot of people are saying is Superstar of the Year. Let me know down below in the comment section, who's your Superstar of the Year? Interested to see what you guys think. Um, John Moxley would lock in the Bulldog choke um, and this would ultimately end the match for Darius Martin. It was fine, um, but I would say that John Moxley has had a couple of much better matches over the year um, than this one against Darius Martin. Um, Darius Martin, he did work hard, but I think what really kind of made this one a little bit awkward was the contrast in styles on here. You had John Moxley, who's more of a kind of a technical uh, bruiser, against Darius Martin, who's more of a high fly. It didn't really work too well, but the result was good and it ended up being a really good match. So big thumbs up on there from me. 
Then we had our next match of the evening, which was FTR versus The Gun Club. So, um, the bookings of The Guns versus FTR, some match that has been, they've been teasing over the past couple of weeks. Really, really excited to see this one. I'm a big fan of The Guns and a big fan of FTR. FTR, arguably one of the best tag teams in wrestling at the minute, uh, up there with the likes of the Usos. Really, really good stuff from here. They obviously hold the, A, uh, the AAA and IWGP tag team titles. However, this match wasn't going to be for a belt. So Austin and Colton had to prove their worth on here going up against one of the great tag teams. Um, I really I, I really struggle with this match because the Guns are one of the upcoming tag teams that I would really like to see be pushed quite heavily in 2023. But I felt like they were being pushed here at the expense of um, FTR, who is arguably one of the greats. Um, the Guns would be able to pick up a tainted victory here on this one. Um, they'd be able to hold onto the rope to get the one, two, three. Referee didn't see it. Yeah, not too sure about this one in my opinion. Um, there's one thing, like I said, to build up the Guns, which I'm all for. Really, 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 really hope that that continues. But to do it at the expense of a high quality tag team like FTR, who you're trying to push to maybe go for your for a, uh, AEW tag titles, not the greatest move there in my opinion on there. Um, FTR still got all the backing from the audience, so the fans absolutely love them still. Let's not ruin FTR because they are absolutely fantastic. Let's get them into a position where they can go for the titles and yeah, see what happens on there. Back in the ring, Tony Schiavone would introduce rapper Rick Ross, who wasted little time dropping an F-bomb on there. It's AEW, what do you expect? Um, and then we, would cut, then we would see um, Swerve Strickland come down to the ring with his new faction called Mogul Affiliates. Um, absolutely brilliant on there with this one. Um, Swerve Strickland would come down. Uh, they would end up getting a beat down on Keith Lee. Um, so Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland are no longer together. No more Swerve in our glory. Swerve Strickland ha has got a new team on here called Mogul Affiliates. Um, there was this. This was. Um, uh, this was no good in my opinion. Um, nothing is going to be hit row in my opinion uh, for Swerve Strict, and there's no there's no beat in that one in my opinion. Um, I was a big fan of Swerve and Our Glory, so it's a shame to see uh, Keith Lee and uh, Swerve part ways. But let's hope that this is the beginning of a singles push. I did mention a couple of weeks ago that I would like to see Swerve Strict and go for go for a big singles push. Is this what we're going to see on here, or are we going to see something else? We'll wait and see what happens in the new year. We would then have our main event on here, the AEW World Women's Championship match between Jamie Hayter and Hikaru Shida. Hikaru Shida, obviously a former AEW Women's World Champion. This is our opportunity to become a two-time champ. Really, really good between these two on here. Jamie Hayter, my, my MVP of the year, I think, for the, for the female wrestlers. Uh, Hater dominating a lot of this match. Um, after the commercial break, she'd uh, started to work her way back up, um, playing that kind of that comeback story on there. Um, a huge, huge missile drop kick she hit. Absolutely brilliant on here. You get your obvious interferences from Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Um, she would end up getting rocked by Sheeta with a huge springboard kick on the hair. Um, but Hater would able, be able to take advantage from the distraction and hit a huge power bomb uh, before hitting then the Haterade Lariat, which I love as well. The name's great, the move's great, the wrestler's great. So, um, And then they would end up picking up the 1-2-3. So Jamie Hater would retain her AEW Women's title with, a, with some assistance from Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. This was an absolutely fantastic match, and this highlighted the fact that both Jamie Hayter and Hikaru Shida have some absolutely immense in-ring talent. Um, the physicality of this match was insane. AEW could really use um, some new faces in AEW for the women's division, though, uh, because it's starting to get a little bit same with the matches we're seeing. Great to see that Jamie Hayter is getting pushed, though, and now she's the champion. Uh, the result was was dramatic. It did a fantastic job. The post match segment saw uh, Tony Storm and Soraya rush down to the ring to fend off Britt Baker, Rebel, and Hater uh, before standing tall with Shida. So maybe that's going to set up for a six woman tag match. Maybe in the in, in the new year, Soraya, Tony Storm, Hikaru Shida versus Britt Baker, Jamie Hater, and Rebel. Would you like to see that one? Let me know down below in the comments. 
But that is this week's episode of Dynamite broken down for you guys. Really hope you guys enjoyed. If I don't see you before, then I really hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas and a happy new year. Uh, for those of you who do want to catch up with me before then, no, please feel free to come over on Saturday when we will go through Smackdown Breakdown, the last Smackdown before Christmas. So really hope you guys enjoyed. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you did. And I'll see you in the next one.